Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at uh, the Liège Arms Museum, the Musée des Armes in Liège, taking a look at another step in the development of this, the modern center fire cartridge. So this story really began with Samuel Pauly, who in 1812 got a patent for the first basically self-contained cartridge. Uh, it was a a constructed assembly, it wasn't sort of the, the single piece brass case that we're used to today, but it was a single complete unit that contained a, a primer and a powder charge and a projectile. And he got this patent in 1812, really extremely early. Now uh, Pauli wasn't able to really follow up very much on his work. Um, and so the next step that we look at in this progression, or one of the next steps, is a guy named Clement uh, Potet who was a, uh, a Parisian French inventor who had a pair of major patents. The first in 1829, so not that long after Pauli, as these things go in the early 1800s, and then a follow-up patent in 1855. And with these two, he basically created the modern shotgun shell. Now his work would be improved upon by others, in particular some folks in England, um, but that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're looking at today, which is one of the guns that he produced to use his new shotgun shells. Because of course if you're designing new ammunition, you really have to give people a gun that they can actually shoot it in. So this has a pretty unique action that I thought would be cool to show you. I have said this before, but I'll repeat it again. If you are an inventor and you want to make sure that you get credit for your work, put your name on it, um, in gold if possible. So Pote, uh, this was Clement Pote, and he is, is his invention uh, patented in Paris. And just to be doubly sure, he went ahead and uh, repeated his name on one side of the action, and the fact that this was patented in Paris on the other side of the action. The whole gun is rather nicely embellished with some kind of uh, typical flower scroll type work. Um, it is an early enough gun that the barrels are all Damascus. We have a sling ring here on the bottom, and otherwise it looks like kind of a typical double barrel side by side shotgun. Except that it has no forestock and no obvious way to open it, like there's no loading lever. Well what you do actually is rotate the whole assembly 90 degrees uh, clockwise. You can then pull the barrels forward and tip them open, which automatically extracts your two shells and allows you to insert two new shells, rotate this assembly closed, push the barrels back, rotate the whole thing, and then you're ready to fire again. It is the initial rotation action that recocks your two hammers, so if the gun has been dry fired that is a bit stiff. But then once we open it up you can see the two firing pins protruding right there through the two breech faces for what really looks like two very modern shotgun chambers. And of course once this is rotated into the firing position it's thoroughly locked uh, and that seals the breech. So uh, Pote's cartridge was basically in a nutshell a metallic base with a paper um, cartridge body. Very much like you would see shotgun shells continue to exist uh, basically up into the 1920s, uh, paper cartridge, paper shotgun shells, and then the paper would be replaced with uh, plastic, which was of course much more water resistant. But that original um, base cartridge with a fulminate style primer uh, built into it, and then a, uh, a paper body, that was the result of Pote and his patents. Uh, he was aided by another French inventor by the name of Schneider. Um, Schneider is one that we can cover in a future video. Well hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I always enjoy tracing the development of some of these early technological systems like modern cartridges. So a big thanks to the Liège Museum for giving me the opportunity to pull this out of display and bring it here to show to you guys. Uh, the museum in Liège is one of the premier firearms museums really in the world. It's one of the few that actually has quite a lot of guns on display. So. If you have the opportunity, if you find yourself in Belgium, in Liège, don't hesitate to stop by and check the place out. Thanks for watching.